Hey everyone, we're building a unique mech combat game, and this is devlog number 4, so let's jump right into things. First and foremost, our game now has a name, so no longer are we operating under the abominable moniker Untitled Mech Game. Instead, we have a shiny new label. Our game is called Drop Command. For me, this name evokes feelings of a MechWarrior style game, with dropships delivering troops and mechs to the front line, and also conveys the idea that you're in command of the battlefield, giving orders and reacting to changing situations. Okay, so I made a lot of promises in the last devlog, and I'm actually happy to say that we managed to get everything done this time around. As well, I do have a few awesome surprises to share with you, so where to begin? Well, we now have explosions in the game. Explosions for missiles, mech parts, mechs, and more. It feels very satisfying to make a mech pop. The exploding missiles make the area of effect missile barrage weapon far more impactful and dangerous. When mechs explode, the size of the explosion is based on the size of the mech. Currently though, exploding mechs don't deal any damage to surrounding units, and I'm really considering changing that. What do you think? Would that be uh, too powerful? Too dangerous? I'm not sure. Speaking of explosions, the AI now knows how to use area of effect weaponry, although they are somewhat indiscriminate when it comes to friendly fire incidents. I think I'm going to have to make them care about avoiding friendly fire with the AoE weapons. It'll be a little bit trickier than just checking lines of fire, but it's probably going to be worth the extra CPU cycles. I don't want the enemy to wipe themselves out. You may have noticed that I have updated the area of effect visuals to make it easier to see them when they are far away. The dome that now appears over the ground targeting circle becomes transparent as it gets closer to the player so that it doesn't obscure the player's line of sight, and it gets more opaque as it gets further away to make it easier to distinguish from the terrain and enemies. This should help both with targeting your own AoE salvos and for avoiding enemy barrages. I think the dome effect helps a lot, but I think it needs a little bit more tweaking. I'm not entirely happy with the transparency level, Maybe a little more transparent at maximum distance, maybe a little more opaque when up close. I'll probably fine-tune it a bit for next time. Alright, moving on, I want to talk about some pretty sweet AI updates. In devlog number 3, I told you that the AI was having a lot of trouble in tight spaces, especially for navigating through canyons. I've made several improvements to the AI, which uh, hopefully address this issue. For those of you who have programmed AI before, you might be wondering why I'm not just using a simple A-star algorithm to calculate efficient paths. Well, there are a few reasons. The first is that A-star uses a lot of computing time to calculate paths, and as I've said many times, CPU cycles are the most important resource we have for this game. I can think of a few workarounds for this, but I don't think it would be worthwhile for this project, the second reason that I'm not using A star is that A star needs to keep track of a grid of blocked and passable terrain. And this means that when the terrain gets updated, for example if a piece of terrain gets destroyed, then any calculated paths become invalid and they need to be recomputed. This just adds to the overhead necessary for implementing A star. To avoid these issues, I'm instead programming a more reactionary AI that doesn't have knowledge of the battlefield beyond what it can see itself. Now, this means that it doesn't know ahead of time what the optimal path will be to get from point A to point B, and instead the AI needs to explore its surroundings to find a path that works. At this point, the AI can now navigate through tight canyons when it's searching for a target, and you can do all of this without using the CPU intensive A star algorithm. I'll need to fine tune and update the pathing aspect of the AI as time goes on, but for now it's working quite well, especially in conjunction with what I'm about to tell you about, which is jump jets. That's right, I've updated jump jets for the player and added jump jets to the AI. There's now a simple user interface which shows jump jet fuel, and I've made a new type of hardpoint on mechs for mounting the jump jets. The hardpoints are the most important part of the jump jet updates. Now, when a limb is blown off, you can lose the jump jets in that limb, and that reduces your jump capacity accordingly. It also allows us to have visual effects for when the jump jet hardpoints are firing. 
The jump jets in Drop Command react slightly differently than you might be used to in other mech-type games. I went for a hybrid approach between the fully directional jump jets of MechWarrior 2 and the purely up-and-forward approach of MechWarrior Online. With our game, you can jump upwards, forwards, backwards, and you can also strafe sideways as well. So this is very similar to the multi-directional jumping of MechWarrior 2. However, uh, your jump jets will always have an upwards component to them, which is quite different from MechWarrior 2. I think this hybrid approach feels really good and feels a bit more realistic than the MechWarrior 2 approach, and it gives you a lot of interesting tactical decision making that other mech games are lacking. You can choose to use your jump jets aggressively, for example charging towards your target faster than you could run, uh, or you can play a bit more defensively using them to hop backwards to increase distance, or maybe you can use them to jump in and out of cover taking pot shots, strafing sideways, things like that. I'm sure you can find many other uses for the jump jets. The new visual effects for the jump jets do need a little bit more work, uh, I'm not completely happy with them, but they are a good indication of, of what they're going to look like. And now that the AI has jump jets, I had to teach them how to use them. The AI uses the jump jets to get around awkward terrain, and they also make good use of the jumping to gain line of sight on hard to reach targets. They can use them to climb to higher elevation levels, and they use this for hunting down targets on the high ground. Okay, let's move on to some of the extra UI stuff. I've added a few items to the crosshair. Now bear in mind that these visuals are definitely temporary. I do need to design a more cohesive HUD at some point in the future. But for now, we're just adding the implementations and getting, getting the core elements working. Uh, the first and most obvious addition, we have a distance to reticle meter, which gives you a good numerical measure for whether your weapons are in range or not. I'm not happy with how it looks at the moment, but for the short term, it does get the job done. We also have weapon group indicator lights, which go along the right hand side of the crosshair. Each one of these corresponds to a weapon group. The currently selected weapon group gets highlighted, and currently there are three color codes for each of the indicators. Red indicates that the weapon group is on cooldown and cannot be fired. Orange indicates that the weapon group is ready to fire, but according to the reticle, you might be out of range for firing those weapons. And blue indicates that the weapon group is ready to fire and your reticle is in range. There's more work to be done for the context-sensitive reticle, uh, especially in making it more easily readable uh, while reducing clutter, and I do want to add more information to it. For now though, this is what we've got. This month, I also worked on coding up automatic weapon groups. This means that you can take whatever loadout you want into combat, and some sensible weapon groupings will be chosen automatically if you haven't set them up yourself. This should help new players to get acclimatized to the game without worrying too much about setting up weapon groupings to make sense, and it should let seasoned veterans jump right into the fray without breaking stride. As the core combat loop of Drop Command becomes further developed, I'm sure I will need to revisit this and update how it works, especially once there are more weapon types and more variety and playstyles. Uh, for now though, it's working very efficiently and I'm quite happy with the results. The last thing that I promised I'd work on for this devlog is battle armor. So imagine you have platoons of soldiers running amok on the battlefield, providing areas of entrenchment for the more mobile units to rely on, fallback points, forward positions, things like that. So far, running around in roughly human-sized combat armor surrounded by giant war machines is actually pretty scary. You might be small and hard to hit, and you can certainly hide behind battlefield debris, but even one stray missile or energy cannon can spell the end. Right now, your worst enemies as infantry are the area of effect weapons like ground attack missiles, or even more terrifying, the flak cannons. I have big plans for the infantry style units, but I'll have to save those as a surprise for a future update. And don't forget to hit subscribe if you want to stay in the loop, I have a ton of awesome progress planned for the coming month. So let's talk about goals for the next devlog. We're going to be hitting our fifth month of development on Drop Command, and I think we've made solid progress. The gameplay is feeling smooth and responsive, the AI is reacting to changing situations, and we're starting to get some variety in unit choices. Several weapon types, three mechs, a VTOL unit, and an infantry style unit. 
Of course, I'll be adding more units as we go along, uh, but I won't promise anything for the next update. The first layer of the AI, the individual unit level, is very nearly finished. Of course, it will need polishing and updating over time, but the core functionality is all programmed and set up. The next layer I want to work on is the squad combat level. In terms of the MechWarrior franchise, you can think of this as the Lance Combat AI. What this level of the AI will need to do is coordinate movement and battlefield positioning and uh, designate support tactics on a group level. Imagine that there is a squad of some type of unit and they have a leader whom they need to support and take orders from. They might try to stay close together to coordinate their fire, maybe to reinforce a flank, uh, or maybe to set up an ambush. This part of the AI will be in charge of formation flying for the VTOLs, lance tactics for mechs, coordinated charges for infantry, and so on. Incidentally, in the future, it will be the squad leader AI, which will be receiving the battlefield orders from the strategic AI, and also taking the orders that the player gives and trying to disseminate them to the troops. The strategic AI is still a long ways off, I haven't even started working on that, uh, but we're getting there. So hopefully within the next few months, we'll be able to start working on that. I am very excited for how Drop Command is shaping up, uh, but we still have a long way to go. I don't expect to have the entirety of squad level AI done by the end of next month, but I do hope to have enough done that I can show it to you working in action. If I can get three VTOLs flying in formation, breaking off and reforming for coordinated assaults, then I will definitely call that a success. In any case, if you're enjoying these devlogs, remember to subscribe for more content like this. Uh, thanks everyone for watching. I hope to have a new devlog ready for you next month when I've made more progress and have new exciting things to share. So until then, take care.